Hello everyone, welcome to your next chapter and section. In this one, we're going to be learning all about Matplotlib, which is a uh, particular type of visualization package that's available in Python. I believe that Matplotlib was also available in MATLAB, but I can't remember specifically, but you know, it's a, it's a package designed for doing visualizations in very simple ways. Uh, it, you can do all kinds of kind of standard descriptive statistical visualizations, as well as a bunch of other very useful nifty things, uh, subplotting. Um, uh, you know, we'll go through the documentation so you can see all kinds of visualizations that are available to you. But Matplotlib, along with Seaborn, are the two go-to uh, visualization packages that are available for Python. So learning these will have you pretty pretty set to go if you get to understand them really well. But part of learning that these these packages isn't much like learning the packages themselves, but learning how to build the types of visualizations you want within the package types. So there is a bit of a learning curve in terms of that respect. So no matter how well you know matplotlib in general, you'll still have to have an understanding of matplotlib or seaborn um, for the specific task that you're trying to do. Let's say like a bar graph or a pie graph specifically. So in this section, we are going to introduce you to matplotlib. We are going to spend a little bit of time talking and exploring the documentation on their website to show you the kinds of things that are available in matplotlib. We are going to talk about important features of not just line plots, but all plots in general. So I'll describe some, some aspects of a plot that you should understand and know very well. Uh, we will create a simple plot and then maybe add a couple of visualization features to that just to get your feet wet. So um, in this, we should start with some definitions. So we're going to be talking about universal features of plotting. One of the most important things that you need to know and uh, understand are the axes. So you have an X axis and a Y axis. You always want to label these axes very clearly in your data so that, and you always want to have a label for them because otherwise people don't know what they're looking at. Um, so axes are, you can also have more than just two axes. You can have X, Y, Z and, you know, beyond. Uh, that's when you start to work in tensors and tensor flow, like our last, like in our last chapter. I'm going to talk about two types of data, uh, specifically ca categorical data and continuous data. Categorical data are things like our species column that are, you know, strings that represent a specific label. They're categories, okay? And categories are really important for a lot of machine learning um, processes because you use categories as your labels typically. But categorical data also tend, if you have lots of categorical data for a specific analysis, you need to do different types of analyses than you would with, let's say, continuous data, which is just like a number, like temperature or something like that over time. Uh, you wouldn't, you, you can't run a regression on categorical data that like you can run on continuous data, but you can't do some categorical analyses that you can do um, that you can't do with continuous data as well. So like knowing what your data types are is really important to determine the types of analysis that you can do later. Uh, the two last two things we're going to talk about are mean and standard deviation, which is just the average of your data as well as the variance. Okay. So I'm going to describe these features with a very simple bar graph here. This is going to be a bar graph representing some averages. This isn't the, the prettiest bar graph, but I want to describe all of these different features. So first off, your y-axis should always be labeled. We don't know what this y-axis actually means at the moment. What can we interpret from this graph? We have three bars of different sizes and that they have different lines. That's about it, okay? Um, but, you know, hypothetically, let's say this is like uh, test scores for three different groups, group zero, group one, and group two. Okay. And you know, it, it goes up to six and these are averages. So group one got a very low average, group two got a much higher average and group three was almost at the cap. Okay. Uh, and so our X axis here would be group. Our Y axis would be average and the bars are representing the average for the groups. Okay. The groups themselves are categorical data in this example. Bar graphs represent 
categorical data on the x-axis or categorical data with continuous data. So your average is your continuous data on the y here. You can have this going in like horizontal, so it doesn't matter what axis it is specifically, but one axis is categorical and one axis is continuous. These lines here are representing the standard deviation. Um, you can do standard deviation for bar plots and line plots, um, but that's, that's what's going on here. So this is basically saying on average, this the, the for this population this bar graph is kind of like floats between this uh, black line a little bit okay and that's basically what it's showing usually you want a title for your plots as well as well as a legend on the right hand side or a place that you, like on, I guess on the top left here would be a, a nice spot for this one to represent what you need to for for your legend information maybe you have like stacked graphs, which are two bars for each group, which are boys and girls in a classroom or something like that. Okay, uh, so with that, guys, let us move into the matplotlib documentation and start to play with matplotlib a little bit as well. So first off, here is the matplotlib homepage. You can see already some of the visualizations you can do. We have seen our simple line graphs. You see some nice like heat maps, and this is a three-dimensional graph. So you can do some pretty interesting stuff here. And matplotlib uh, runs in IPython and Jupyter Notebooks super well. So that's another reason why we like it, because we can use it in Jupyter Notebooks and it runs natively like really easily. Uh, let's look at some of the things that we can do with matplotlib. So um, and this is in the overview documentation. So why don't we go to docs? Oh, let's go into modules. Modules will be better. So um, these are some of the core packages that are available. Let's see here. We can do, this is basically just showing you all the different uh, things that you can do with matplotlib. We're gonna be looking at specifically pyplot a lot. So if we look at pyplot, this is how, this is where all the plotting features are. So this is like the, main module, the main feature of matplotlib. And you can see all of the different things we can create and do with a, uh, a pyplot object. We can, you know, we can create a bar plot, which is here is a horizontal bar plot. We can create contour plots. Where's the contour? Contour plots. We can plot um, scatter plots, you name it. And there's a bunch of other f uh, functions and features here as well. Like, can we auto scaling the axes? Can we uh, clearing the f clearing the current figure? Can we create subplots? What are the error bars? Uh, can we annotate? Can we, uh, you know, there, all of these different functions are designed for manipulating that figure that we just looked at. Um, changing how many ticks there are, changing the color of the bars, changing the title, you name it. Uh, PyPlot, the, the PyPlot module specifically has most of what's needed. Oh, um, spectrograms, you can run a spectrogram right, like right out of matplotlib. So a lot of very, very useful uh, functions and features within matplotlib, specifically PyPlot. So 99% of what we're gonna be doing with, um, matplotlib is in this module. So all of these functions, we're not gonna use all of them, we're probably not even gonna use half of them, but um, the answers to most of our questions are gonna be in this in this pyplot module. What kind of graphs can we make with matplotlib? Here are a couple of examples for lines and bars. All of this stuff has code associated with it, so you can actually go into these uh, object, uh, into these different uh, you know pages and see how they built this code. At all this gradient stuff that's pretty fancy. Um, they have scatter plots, these are contour plots, all the different stuff available for that. We have subplotting, so we are going to create our own subplots as well, where we have you know one plot, one plot, and a plot below, or something like that. Uh, and it's showing you all the different stuff that you can do in terms of building different types of visualizations. People have made demos for it, and so if you're like, oh, you know, I like how it angled things here. So how do I do text boxes like that for my graphs and so on and so forth? Now, all of that can be usually found either within the documentation that we just looked at or one of these code samples. And there's just a ton here, guys. So don't be afraid. Like, look at how awesome this annotation polar thing is. It's super neat. So um, this is a great, great resource to find aspects of code that you want and to, to to use for your own visualization. So I do highly recommend checking these out. We can we can look at one like really quickly and 
you can see the code associated with it. So, you know, usually it, it will, you know, give you some pre pre hard coded data that you can and then we'll give you an example of how to how to build these graphs. Okay, so this is a stacked graph pretty, pretty nice and pretty interesting. And yeah, you, know, you can do all kinds of nifty things. You have a legend here, you have different colors, super cool. You have different groups, they labeled these properly. You have a nice y axis, you have a nice title legends. Uh, everything looks good for this stacked bar graph, definitely. Okay, why don't we just jump into it ourselves now. So first thing we're going to do is we import matplotlib.pyplot as just plot here. This is common nomenclature uh, in data science. So if you go on Stack Overflow or anything like that, people are usually doing an import like this. Uh, I've already loaded this uh, pandas data set here. We don't need the scikit-learn one at the moment. And we're really just going to be playing with this as it is. So first thing, one of the things that you usually do when you're plotting is if you have x and y, if you have an x and y, you, you kind of want to separate those as different objects, okay? Because when you plot, you're going to use this dot. The, the, the simplest way to plot is going to be using dot plot. And you give it an x and a y, and then you pass into it a string, and the string is going to kind of hint to it what to do next. So what happens when we run this? We get a scatter plot with red dots. What happens if I do this? We get a weird line plot with different dots. Okay, so this this like this line plot doesn't exactly make sense, but I'm really just trying to demonstrate the parameters that are available to you with this uh, dot plot feature. So actually, just give me one quick second to find this dot plot, and we can look at all the different things that you can, um, you know, that you can, can add to it. Basically, uh, where's the dot plot here, and we'll see all the different. Uh, all the different parameters that you can pass into that string part, the formatting type, right? Format there. So where is it? Um, uh, here we are. So uh, you can set the the by setting a character, you're telling it what kind of color you want the 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 either the scatter plot, the scatter point to be or the line to be. It can be either a line or a scatter plot, basically. Those are the two options you have, and you can determine what type of marker you want. So I set a circle marker this time, but you can pass in all of these different types of parameters if you want a marker style. And if you want lines, these are the line types that are available. So we can we can play with these a little bit more. Let's go back here and see what we can do with this. We'll go K. Like that. what was it? What did they? What was their example? It was um, K up and then colon. So this is going to be black triangle up markers. Yeah. So black K is black. This is triangle up, and then we're going to do that type of marker, and then that dotted lines across them. Okay. So that is like really basics of how to start to plot with matplotlib. You're going to have to have an x value, which we set as petal length. A y value we set a species. Let's say sepal length now. See what happens. And let's get rid of this line. We have black dots. And yeah, so our x axis is the petal length and our y axis is the sepal length. And we can almost kind of see a separation here between two um, between two groups. This might be its own flower type, and these might be a group of the other one. Just a hint, perhaps, though. And we have triangles here. Why don't we do this instead? And we have different types of dots, okay? And let's do yellow. Sure, okay? So uh, just a couple of examples of like playing a little bit with styling features using the very first dot plot function. We're going to use different types soon, but this is the very, very first, very simple way of doing some manipulation with dot pi plot. Anything else that we'd want to add to this? Now, this is a, another great way of learning learning um, a new package, guys, is by going to the documentation and seeing what kinds of arguments that you can pass into it. You can, you know, directly say color green, mark style. You can do a new line width, so you can start to play with the parameters and like how thick they are and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, here are the parameters here though. Here's the official documentation. You can you pass you have to give it an X and Y, and you can optionally give it the format type, okay? And that was what we were playing with before in terms of format type. Here are the other art parameters that you can pass into it. You can scale your X and Y. You can set the opacity of your markers. So we'll we'll play with that a little bit. Uh, let's do let's just do black. Uh, let's do blue. Let's do big circles. Uh, alpha equals 0.2, and you'll see that they're like transparent. So alpha is to set the opacity for scatter plots in your graph. Um, and you know, there's there's a ton more guys. We can we can go through them uh, in our next class probably. But that is our our, our first foray into simple plotting. We did a very simple scatter plot and a very simple line plot that would, you know, need more if we were going to make this into something that would be usable, let's say for like a business or something like that. But introduction into plotting, I think we've done a good enough job. So let's do a recap. So what do we learn today, guys? Today we learned uh, the basics of matplotlib. We learned how to create some simple scatter plots and line plots and then play with a couple of features within them so like how to change some colors and what we're going to be looking at when it comes to different attributes when we are building our plots in our subsequent classes so in our next class we are going to spend um, time actually building line and bar graphs uh, uh, and make them look actually kind of nice, like spend the full class trying to build out one of those and explain what's going on and uh, take it from there. So with that guys, thank you very much and see you next class.